God. Amen? Amen. We must become as little children. The same little children we keep correcting. Come on, somebody. That's just who we are before God. Amen? Amen. Amen. That's just who we are. We, come on, somebody. We may be 30, we may be 40, but we are nothing else other than children before God. Amen? Amen. 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 So, amen. So, we'll be singing deep and wide and you and me, brother, before God. Amen. Don't, don't think of it being small. Amen. That's just who we are before God. Amen. Come on, somebody. Give God a praise. Amen. 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 We thank God. You can have a seat this morning. Amen. Amen. It's so good to see all of you in the house of God this morning. And I would just like to say something. Amen. Let us continue to. Amen. To build our ministry. This is a beautiful ministry. How many children do we have in this morning? How many? How many kids do we have? How many? Some, some call the is 11? Yeah, yeah. Do you know it's about 11 other kids that are not, not here this morning? There, there's about 11 other kids that belong to Seed of Faith that is not here. Amen? So we can do, an, um, we can do a great production. Amen? For this season. Amen? Now the kids are willing you know. If I was to ask the kids, but of the friends, influence them. If I was to ask the kids right now, would you like to be a part of a Christmas program? Let me see the kids who like to be a part of a Christmas program. Let me see your hands this morning. You'd like to be a part of a Christmas program? Let me see your hands, kids. Come on. All of you, all of you, who want to be, be a part of the Christmas program? Let me see your hands. That's all? How many of you? That's 11 hands? Okay. Now, what I'm saying is this. Now, okay, kids, that's good. I mean, I would like to be part of this program. Mm -hmm. Amen. I'm just a little overgrown. Amen. What I'm saying is this. The only thing that stops their kids from coming out to get prepared is parents. That's all. That's, that's all it is. That's all it is. Only the parents that stop that. Amen. And I would like you, all of you parents just to see the value and your kids being a part of their church. It stays with them forever. Amen? Amen? You know, I still can remember singing as a child on Sunday school they had on a porch of my house. As a child, this was when I was about eight years old. I remember walking and they had this Sunday school. And they called all the children to children. I was bare feet then, you know. You know back in the day, you used to walk bare feet. Your children don't walk bare feet today. Amen? But back in the day, we was barefoot children. Amen? In Camp Road. And they called all the children. Amen. They called all the children that was standing on the side of the road. Joseph, they called all the children. And I was one of them. And we ran up on this porch and we singing. And we were singing on this porch. And do you know, as a kid, I always, even though we never saw that church came back in our neighborhood, every day of my life I remember that church was did that. Every day of my life I remember the kid. The, the kid in me, and when they call us up, and they teach us on Sunday school sound, and we were singing. You understand me? And it always want me. It always teach me to want God. It, I always wanted to want God and seek after God. Amen. And be parents. You can never be too busy. Come on, somebody. When you sit down, you do look at another church house in the program with their children. Ask yourself. What happened to your church? Just ask yourself that question. Why isn't my church having a program for their children? And it's not that your church is not having a program. Why didn't I take my children to support our church program? You have a pastor that is a youthful pastor that is interested in putting these production and highlight these children this season. December this month is a month for the children to be highlighted because our Christmas is really for them. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. So teach them something. Let them be a part. Let them feel what it is to be the Mary and the Joseph one so they can have this Joseph. They can grow up thinking that Joseph was the father of Jesus and, and, how, and how the three wives went. Let them have this experience. 
in their church. So parents, I'm just going to ask you, please, sacrifice your Friday. As a matter of fact, we so close now to the production. Amen? Because this production is going to be like in the next couple of weeks. So what are we going to do? Amen? We're going to dedicate our Wednesday night and Friday to the speed of our children. And that too means that there's no service Friday. I mean, no service Wednesday. That means that we're going to make the sacrifice and highlight our children. Because our children, we're going to, we're going to and we go into it. Amen. We're going to fill up these children and we're going to show our children off. Amen. 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 Just how God shows off, yeah, we're going to yeah. show our children off. Amen. 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 And I'm not talking about showing off my grandson because all know that's my grandson. I'm talking about showing off seed of fake children. Come on, somebody. Amen. 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 So, this is what we're going to do. We're going to show off our children because we have talented children again. We have very talented children, smart children. And I know about the, the, the smart children that is in this ministry. So parents, please, don't let it be on your course that your pastor was pleading for you to be involved with your children's protection. Last year, we didn't have any. Even though I wanted it to happen, last year, we didn't have any. We were somewhat unstable in the hotel. Amen? And anything would cost us. We had to cop up with so much more money. And they would they go up on us at Christmas time. The, the rental for the, hotel, for the space in the hotel would have increased. Watch night service would have been like double the money that we would pay for our normal service. But now God put us in a place. Amen? Amen. So we can have these productions. With no extra cost. Amen? Amen. So let's give God a hand clap for that. Amen. So we're gonna we're gonna support our we starting from this Wednesday. We're gonna bring the kids out because we gotta get them on power. Amen. And I would like for all of you um so, uh, volunteers to right now it's only sister Adriana. Amen. Just do it up. The production, it cannot happen with just a brand. So we just need support. Volunteers, please. It's a blessing when you invest in children. And I'm begging for you. I'm begging for you. Would you go on my knees? I'm on my knees and beg you parents. And I'm going to do that to keep you on the record. I'm going to go on my knees. Parents, please support your children. Bring your children out and let's do a production in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's teach them how Jesus came here. What's the purpose of his mission here? Amen? Amen. And, and you should be ashamed taking your child to the mall to take a picture with Sam. You should be ashamed. God bless you. If you have a Bible today, let's turn to the book of Mark. A uh, cameraman, you should have the, you should film me when I was on my knees. Yep, I did. I did that. I did that. Amen. I'm sad. Amen. I love children. I love children. Amen. I go to sleep moves right now, man. I'm the spa. Amen. Amen. Maybe. I mean, I, I, I go to sleep people's house right now. And their children, I mean, they all over me. Amen. It's just a joy. Right, brother, right? It's a joy when you see children love you. Children don't have no malice, you know. Children don't keep malice, you know. Children, there's children, there's children. Amen. And I just love that. Amen. 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 Only one child I know that's really annoying me sometimes. Amen. You know who that is, right? That's Jordan. Amen. 
Amen. John is get very Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give him, let's give Jesus a praise. Amen. 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 Let's give Jesus a praise. Amen. I remember first trying to pray, trying to get a word from the Lord. Amen. He told me, Granddad, what this word is. I said, I'm not teaching this morning. He said, okay, let's see what this word is. So I tell him what the word is. So he said, what the next one is. Amen. So the only guy I get to tell you is what the word is. Amen. That's all I get to me this morning is what that word is. Amen. Amen. God is good. And thank God for all of you beautiful people in the house of God this morning. Amen. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, God bless you. You look real good. God bless you. You look real good. Amen. Look at your next door neighbor and say, neighbor, you look, you look real good. You look real good too. Amen. Amen. The book of March. The book, uh, the book of Mark. Amen. My wife was a distraction. Excuse me. Amen. Amen. The book of Mark chapter 11. Chapter 11. We can have a wonderful production this year. Amen. I'm so excited. I can't wait to have our Christmas production. Amen. Our Christmas production. Amen. We're going to this. Amen. And Amen. We can. Uh, I would like to. Uh, this week we get a house. We can decorate. We can, we want to decorate our church. Amen. But we will speak to that this afternoon. I would like to have a meeting this afternoon at 4:30. Amen. But we have a church meeting at 4:30. Amen. Leaders and members. At 4:30, we're gonna meet this evening at 4:30 at the church. Amen. Amen. So here it is in the book of Mark, chapter 11. Father, we thank you for your word this morning. Thank you, dear God, for. Blessing your people, oh God. Blessing the heirs of the kings. Father God, we thank you, dear Close God, for you eyes. are a God that is able. Close your eyes. We are able. Lord, we thank you this morning, God, for the establishment of your word. Good, right? Bless this people, Lord. Bless this people everywhere. Father God, see the faith that is so big and so huge. Father God, bless the people and they're going out and they're coming. Bless them from this time. Even as this word go forth, Lord, let your establishment be made known. In Jesus' name, and the church say, Amen. Amen. The book of Mark, it says, chapter 11, and we can read from verse 22. It says that, and Jesus answering said unto them, Have faith in God. Have faith in God. Verse 22, it says, For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say to this mountain, Be thou removed, and be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe those things which he said shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he said. Now, if I may just talk for a second. Do you think God really means that you going to have whatsoever you say? No. Or do you think God is just trying to make us feel a little good? I think that God, 
I know God meant what he said. God says that you shall have whatsoever you say. You should have exactly what you said. That's what the word of God says. Most of you people have exactly what you said. Already. But it does not stop where you are. Life is about a journey where we continue saying what we want. Life is a journey where you spring of one level and you go to the next level. But it is so amazing that you cannot get to the next level without saying, I'm going to the next level. Experiencing levels in the life is not automatic. Hello? Levels is like Levels is like going up the stairs or going up a stairway. No man never make it up to the stairway except he say in his heart that he will climb these stairs. You realize that no, mostly people who don't like stairs, they always avoid climbing the stairs. But the minute you make up your mind and you say, that I'm going to climb up these stairs to get to the third level, to the fourth level. But it never happened until you see that. You will always, anytime it's time to go to the next level or go to the, up to the next floor, you will always ask, you going up to the next floor, take this for me. Are you going to the next floor, take this for me. Because why? Because you're not really prepared, you're not really, you're mentally not ready to climb those stairs. Amen. So, going to your next level, it always depends on your mental decision. If you're not mentally ready, you'll never go. You will never, never, never go. Amen? Amen. So, here it is. So whosoever should say to this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast in the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart. You will not doubt in your heart. Come on, somebody. You will not doubt in your heart. You will not doubt in your heart. You will not doubt in your heart. We are halfway there. You are halfway making it where you want to go. But you know what the problem? There is a problem that really exists in the church that we seem to overlook time and time again. There's a problem that we always overlook. There's a problem. There is a real problem that we keep overlooking. And we're going to find out from the scripture, we're going to find out from the scripture what that problem is. I'm here this morning, not because... So here it is. Let's read verse 24. Therefore I say unto you, what thing soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you have received and you shall have them. Believe that you have received them and you shall have them. Believe that you have received them. Believe that you have received them. It never says receive them, then believe that is there. You have to believe that you have received it before it physically becomes available. 
oh, you mean I got to believe that I have it already? So how can I believe that I have it already and still be the same? Your desire. Read the scripture again. What it says about your desire? Therefore I say unto you. Therefore I say unto you. What thing soever it doesn't. You see, the scripture is so amazing. It never tells you what to desire. It never tells you the things to desire. It tell, it says whatsoever you desire. Whatsoever you desire, Sharon. You see how good God is. You see, we live in a world where we live in a world where if if you mind the things that you see and the limitations that are out there, it limits your desires. I don't know if you ever go in a situation where people tell you, take your mind off that because you can't get that. You ever had a situation like that? Mm-hmm. Folk tell you, don't even think about that. That's how they'll leave. Come on, somebody. How dare you insult my... How, ins- how did you insult me that way? According to my Bible, it says, it says that whatsoever I desire, you can... Look at your desire to be whatsoever the things that you thought about, the things that you think about. When someone tells you that you cannot obtain certain things, they are telling you that that's beyond your thought. Hello? Amen. Which is an insult. When someone tells you you cannot get certain things, they tell you that your thoughts are not to that level. Oh, glory to God. That's an insult. So whatsoever things that you desire, and the, the whole message is, the whole message today is based on giving you the revelation of what hinders you from seeing some manifestation. I'm here this morning to really to encourage your heart this morning. That's my job. My job is just to encourage your heart to let you know that all things are possible with God. My duty is to deliver hope to the people of God. I'm not here to deliver no judgment because I am not God. Amen? Amen. The word of God says judgment belonging to who? Judgment belonging to God. Amen? I'm only here as a pastor to encourage the flock. Amen? Amen. Just to encourage the flock. And if the flock can get to the place where, if the flock can get to the place where they become so encouraged, they're going to stick with Jesus a little longer. Amen? Amen. So this is the reason why we keep congregating. We only congregate to be encouraged. You You are not forced to be here. And if you keep, you really come here willingly, then the blessings will rest upon you. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Because why? You come with a willing, you come with a willing heart. God is all about your willingness. You know? God is not about forcing you. Amen? God is not about forcing you. Some of you, when they used to call you a lot, are you coming to church? 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 You know what this is? You notice I stop, right? The reason why I stop because God is a God is God. He, he cherishes your willingness. Your willingness is value to him. When you are willing, the Bible says when you're willing and obedient. You remember that? When you're willing, when you're willing. When you let's take for instance, you might have been heading straight to work. And you just felt the presence of God. God said, go to church. And you and you get on that phone and you call and say, listen, yeah, I can't make it today because of X, Y, Z. And you head to church. Do you know these are things that God takes pleasure in? Because it becomes a what? It becomes a sacrifice. You just slap Satan in his face. Or Caesar. Let's use the word Caesar because the Bible says, "Render things to Caesar, the things of Caesar's, and to God the things of God." Because Caesar really shared to do where we send it to be the work, right? Come on, somebody say Amen. Amen. So okay then. So you 
So you all smack Caesar this Sunday. You call Caesar the four and say, Caesar, I'm not gonna make it to the I'm not gonna make it today. I'm not gonna make it today. So Caesar the next day got dumbfounded. Oh my god. He called God then. Because why? You slap Caesar in the face and you go into worship. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Don't you think God is don't you think God take pleasure in that? Amen. You see, these are the things that God take pleasure in. God take pleasure in your willingness. Nobody forced you to do that. You did that because you think God worth that. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. You only did that because God worked that and more. Amen? Amen. Okay. So here it is now. See, see God says this to you. So whatsoever things you desire. Whatsoever things. You know, anybody that gave me that type of privilege. Anybody that gave me that type of privilege. Anybody that gave me that type of privilege. You know, I'm going to do some crazy things, bro. Shoots. Anybody gave me that type of privilege to take me what say what my desire? When I just call them on the you know, I just call them on the phone, whatever I desire can have. You know I'm gonna do some crazy things for that. I mean I'm just bringing it to the, 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 the to, to this realm. Anybody would tell me that whatsoever I ask for, when I call, just say it, and it's done. Anybody what can tell me, say, Pastor of Flowers, whatever you want, when you call me, just say it, and I will have it delivered. Don't you think I'm going to do some crazy things for a person? I'm going to do some crazy things, trust me. If they can tell me that, I'm going to do some things, I'm going to... I'm going to do some disappearing act. I'm going to be more drawn to, to that desire, to that person. I'm just saying this now. I'm not speaking anything like, like, you know, where our simple thoughts go. I'm speaking of a naturally. So here it is, because really nobody never said that to me. And I don't think anybody would ever say that to me. And if anybody ever do say something close to that, it has to be heavenly influence. Amen. In other words, it cannot happen except God grant you favor. Now when God grants you favor, man does things, but it's not the man that did it. It is the windows of heaven, it's God, the favor of God, that cause men to open doors for you. Amen. Sometimes we mix, we miss it. We miss it, we miss it, we miss it. Because sometimes people give us things, people bless us, and they just wait for an opportunity to shut the door. Come on, somebody. Amen. No, the Bible says don't bear to welcome. You remember that? Amen. Because in other words, you can go to somebody's house, you can go to your neighbor's house. And they welcome you with a they welcome you with a broadest smile and oh my god it's so good that you come and visit us today. Have yourself so go to the fridge, take whatever you want. They will tell you all of this, but you keep on going. Hello? Amen. The, the Bible speaks, the Bible speaks about do not wear out your welcome. Come on. Amen. Because you're gonna hear your neighbor start saying some different things. They can say, man, you come here a little too often now, okay? Mm -hmm. At the, at the first, he was okay. But you keep coming. I, I can't deal with this. Give me some space, man. You know, stay home for a while. You see? And this is what the Word of God tells us. So we got to know sometimes. We have to know as people of God. We got to know sometimes. That if it ain't God, come on somebody, man, going to change on you. If God is not doing it, it's only God that can bear us every day. It's only God that can, can take us every day, can take our... Our moodiness and, and our our you know take our self every day. Only God can do that. Amen. Man will man will change. Man changing all the time. Come on, somebody. Amen. All the time. Come on, you if you know you, you go to somebody house early in the morning. You go to, uh, you, uh, yeah yeah yeah. You see some people they're nice and friendly, and nice and good in the middle of the day. But not good at all six o'clock in the morning. You know you'll see somebody different. Come on, somebody. 
And some people, when they get up in a bad mood, they take hours and hours. They, some people literally take almost the end of the day to, 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 to catch themselves. But you know what I like about God? God is so, he is so, this is why I believe so much. People thought we, we ought to just give God praise for who he is. Because God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. There is no changing and turning in God. When God says something, he means that what he says. He means exactly what he says. And this is the reason why we have to value the words of God. We value his words. Value when God says something, it's what it is. You know why we see so many changes? It's because we really don't believe the, the definitive words of God. When we take God's word as it is, it will never change. You put changes in what God say about you. Because you doubt. You hear the scripture says? It says if you what do not doubt. Say if you do not say if you shall believe and not doubt. Where is that? Read that again. Uh-huh. And thou shalt cast the mountain in the sea, and you shall not doubt in your heart. 